It's strawberry story time. Hello, little berries. Welcome back. Today's story I've got for you is from the series "The Biscuits" by Rachel Pegler. This one's called Grandpa Bourbon and the Elephant in the Room. I wonder why there's an elephant in the room. Let's go see. Come on. Grandpa Bourbon was an extremely nice sort of fellow. Wherever he went, the sun would shine, as did the kindness in his eyes. Head of the House of Bourbon, for many, many years he was a grandpa, a great grandpa, a great, great grandpa, and a great, great, great grandpa. And that really does quite explain how great he actually was. Over the years, there have been many generations of Bourbons. Some of them were old themselves now, but they all still loved him very much, and they especially loved all of his stories. Grandpa Bourbon lived far, far away with Grandma Bourbon, over the Crumbly Sea and around the corner from the place you know, which is Crumbleton. They lived in a wonderful old chateau in the market town of Frangipan. The chateau was nestled within a crop of really tall fir trees. Halfway up a grassy hill, Grandma and Grandpa had lived in this wonderful castle for many, many years. The friendly town of Frangipan was a beautiful place to live. It was always bright, warm, and sunny. A lovely holiday destination for many biscuits each year. It was a uniquely wonderful town, well known for being set in a very quirky land full of magical fun and surprises. It really was a place quite unlike any other. Every year, at the same time, Grandma and Grandpa Bourbon made a long journey across the Crumbly Sea to Crumbleton to visit the whole family. It was a time of great excitement, especially for the little ones. Now, because Grandpa was very old, this meant that he had many, many years worth of wonderful stories to tell, and this was what the baby Bourbons looked forward to the most. In fact, the great big leather-bound storybook he wrote them all down in just kept getting bigger and bigger. It was some achievement that he could still carry it around. They were to stay in Crumbleton for a good few weeks, and so had packed rather a lot of luggage to take with them. They also had been busy buying all of the little biscuits presents. It took a while to transport everything down the long, spirally staircase, and they felt quite puffed out already. All packed up by the door with their very many suitcases, Grandma and Grandpa eagerly waited for their lift. On the horizon was the magnificent Trifle Tower. From here, you could see its impressive cherry top landing pad. This was for the jellycopter. The jellycopter was the best form of transport to get over the hills and down to the port of Frange. Duncan Biscuit's younger brother, Timothy Nigel, TN for short, flew the jelly back and forth to the port about a hundred times a day. Grandma and Grandpa's lift arrived right on time. They don't have what you'd think of as a regular taxi service in Frangipan. Their taxis are called the Ayaxes. The Ayaxes are not even cars. They are ostriches crossed with kangaroos and orangutans, which carry massive saddlebags. Ostaroos are their official species name, a good, reliable and fast mode of transport. This is good because there are a lot of forests and hills in Frangipan with no roads through. Iats are very environmentally friendly too. They use no fuel apart from the leaves and bananas which they eat. They can bjong themselves all the way to the top of the trifle tower on their kangaroo legs, which was handy because no one ever thought to build a lift in it. 
Amazingly, they had been doing this since 1846 when they were discovered deep inside the Forest of Being by Sir David Battenberg, BBE. He was on a nature expedition there with the Biscuit Exploration Society. Strangely, the transport idea had not taken off in any other country. Although, if you ever see a taxi behind you, whilst you're driving in your car, just look in your driver's rear-view mirror and you'll clearly see that the EAX magical logo on top of the car all lit up. It's the mysterious way of trying to get themselves here. After a very bouncy journey, Grandma and Grandpa settled into the jellycopter, popped on their seatbelts and listened to the propellers getting faster and faster, ready for liftoff. Flying through the air in style, Grandma and Grandpa were very excited as TN touched down in the dock of the Port of Frange. The smell of the crumbly sea was as sweet as popcorn. How exciting to be going on their summer holidays. With their feet on the warm tarmac of the port, TN started up the copper blades and waved goodbye whilst radio calling his brother Duncan to let him know that they were on their way. It was all part of the Biscuit Airways five-star port-to-port service. Three long hours across the crumbly sea, Grandma and Grandpa enjoyed watching the whales and the dolphins. They even spotted Squiddy too, the large purple octopus who lived in the harbour. It was still light when the ferry sailed into the harbour town of the Crumbleton-on-Sea and many biscuits stood upon the sea walls to welcome them. Duncan Biscuit was also there waiting proudly beside his shiny yellow taxi. After a quick refreshing drink in the bum and squid, Duncan drove them the thirty or so miles to Crumbleton. Grandma and Grandpa were always very tired after this long journey and they felt very weary as they pulled up on the drive of Mummy and Daddy Bourbon's lovely old cottage. Inside, the little biscuits were full of excitement A big feast had been prepared and the baby biscuits were already tucking into their scrummy food as it was past six o'clock. Their faces lit up with excitement as they heard the old front door open with a creak. Grandma and Grandpa walked in as Duncan brought the luggage in behind them. Grandma and Grandpa were also very hungry by now. Grandma, Grandpa and all of the older biscuits joined them at the very long farmhouse table. After much laughter and lovely food, time was ticking on and the best part of the day was yet to come. The babies and small biscuits all got down from the dinner table and ran to the nursery to change into their pyjamas. Poor Grandpa Bourbon's arms were being pulled here, there and everywhere. The small biscuits were now looking forward to getting settled in the cosy parlour around Grandpa's chair for story time. Gathering their blankets, teddy bears, bottles and snugglies, they all trotted eagerly across the landing and down the two stone steps into Grandpa's snug. Little Molly Ginger held the big green storybook tightly. She was the one who loved Grandpa's stories most of all. All settled down, they were feeling very excited. OK then, my little biscuits, chuckled Grandpa. Which story would you like to hear tonight? He opened the big green book and the familiar smell of its lovely old pages wafted around the room. I want the elephant one, Cookie Doo shouted over her teddy. I want the one with the wizard, shouted little Tommy from the floor. No, no! said little Greg Shortcake sucking on his dummy. I want the one about that zilly zookeeper. They all laughed out loud. That was a really funny one. What about the one about the monkey and the cow? What about the one where you took me to the fairy angel in the cloud? laughed little Molly. I want the one where the hippo blew off in his aeroplane and went faster, shouted Charlie Chalk in hysterics. They were all getting very giggly now and were roaring with laughter whilst imitating the loud bottom sounds of the hippo. 
The other biscuits could even hear them from the kitchen over the clattering of their pot washing. OK, 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 laughed Grandpa Bourbon. Why don't I tell you a true story about all of those things? Yay! Yippee! they all cried. Come on then, settle down and I'll tell you a story about something that happened to me a long, long time ago when I was a younger biscuit. They all snuggled down and Grandpa opened the big green book. Max and me. There once was a young biscuit who came to stay with me. His name was Max and he was three. Things started to happen really quite soon when Max said to me, there's an elephant in my room. Oh yes, I said pretending I could see. I'll call the zookeeper so that he can catch that elephant that's in your room. So I called him quick and he came quite soon. Can you hear the stomping? Max said to me. Look up there, a monkey in a tree. I looked in the corner and pretended he was right and then I called the zookeeper for the second time that night. Can't get sleep, shouted Max again. Look at the ceiling, a hippo in a plane. Oh yes, I replied, so there is. I'll call back the zookeeper, he'll be here in a whiz. A witch on a broom with a fish on a stick. Oh goodness me, I'll call someone quick. But who should I call? The fish was not small. The big-nosed witch was dressed in black. Her big witch broom had flattened her cat. We sat there and thought, Max and me, we shall call a wizard, would you agree? So the wizard came wearing a big tall hat. He came with a wand and a cricket bat. I was puzzled now and so was the cow who suddenly appeared next to the elephant who now had a beard. The room was so full it had always been empty. I started with Max but now I had plenty. An elephant, some monkeys, a zookeeper too, who looked at me strangely, quite unsure what to do. The witch and the fish, the stick and the wizard, and out of the window it was striking a blizzard. What a strange night! So Max and me lay down in his bed and counted to three. Tired little Max closed his eyes. I opened mine and what a surprise! The elephant and his friends, they had been there so long. Now Max was asleep and they were all gone. Grandpa Bourbon quietly closed the book. All the little biscuits were fast asleep, dreaming about elephants, monkeys, zookeepers and wizards. Grandma Bourbon popped her head around the door and Grandpa smiled at her. All was quiet and peaceful in Crumbleton. What a wonderful day, she whispered. Yes, he agreed with a proud tear in his eye. We are very, very lucky biscuits. And indeed, they were. And so, that was the end. Please do come back soon to meet some more biscuits and maybe a Osteroo too. Over the rainbow, take a star to the right. And that's where you'll find them. See you soon and good night. In loving memory of Molly and your incredible imagination, without which the middle of this story wouldn't exist. <laughs>